Welcome to the Sleepy G Show. I'm your host, with your most. My name is Gomez, and tonight it's always a, an amazing night when I could get not one, not two, but three members of the band that comes up as head and shine up in the Kingston, New York area. I would like to welcome everybody, Chris Kelly, Michael Chambers, and Chris Ferguson. Guys, welcome to the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. I mean, uh, listen, I, I I listened to the album, listened to some songs. I, I got to say, you guys got a nice sound. I, I love it. And, uh, you know, being that you guys are not that far from me, you know, New York to New Jersey, um, it's kind of relatively nice to see, uh, talk to someone actually a lot local than I'm used to. So i like to know how you guys got together to form the band. Well... It started, uh, my wife knew Michael. Mm -hmm. She had done some work with him and she told me, oh, this guy, Michael, he's a, he's a music guy. That's what she said. You guys should meet. And then it was like a year later, I think we finally, they set up a, like a dinner <laughs> and we got together and, you know, we, we made some noise in the studio and and I just, I happened to mention, I was like, you know, I just, I happened to just have gotten like about 50 song ideas. And Michael's like, well, send them over. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess he heard something he liked and he started like cranking out drum tracks, just like, so before I knew it, we had like these demos mm -hmm. and we were like, this, this shit sounds good. <laughs> and then, um, and then I think I just got this crazy idea. I thought I was just going to start, you know, we would just do a little project, have a little solo project or just make a, make some recordings. And then mm -hmm. the idea of a band popped in my head one day and it was kind of like crazy to me. Like, really a band? <laughs> That's, that band. sounds about right. It's like when they said <laughs> I started a podcast. So I, I yeah, know. yeah, you know what I mean? Like something. I, I know how it is. Yeah. It's totally off the wall, but it, it sounded like it was working. Yeah. So, and Michael's like, hell yeah, let's do it. And, uh, we have, uh, you know, we live near Woodstock, New York, which has millions of musicians. Oh yeah. You know? We thought about like, who, who should we ask to play bass? And again, we had just another wacky idea. Like let's go on Craig, the Craigslist and just see who's out there. Just, just to see who's out there. <laughs> and Chris was like, the first and I think the only response we got to the ad and oh wow and we met and we didn't even play like we just met and I was like he's the guy I just know he is <laughs> so that's <laughs> Chris how did you feel about that one right there being the only one but you know as you know he's saying that you know he knew right away by just meeting you how, how did that feel for you well it felt good because um I'm kind of new to the Hudson Valley area. I'm originally from Tennessee. So uh, just trying to get plugged into the music scene up here. I didn't really know a whole lot of people. So, um, which is kind of tough because th there are some great musicians up here, but I feel like they're all very scattered and, mm -hmm. uh, and too old to just be hanging out in the bar scene and trying to find, chase down dudes. <laughs> they're the same cool one you want to play with. So I just was very patient and very picky about stuff that came across Craigslist, Facebook, whatever. Um, but reached out to Chris. He sent me some stuff. And I was like, man, they sent me what they had been working on. Right. Know, uh, sending each other trading tracks. And I was like, wow, this is pretty good. And like, I hope he likes me. I hope he responds back again. But yeah, we had coffee that first day and, and it was a good hang. And I was like, cool. Yeah, no. really, really dig what, what what we're doing. So, well, you, you know, it's funny. Like I said, I I, I love the idea of the, some of the songs you guys have, and you know, and the lyrics, you know, that Chris has written down. But definitely, Mike, we gotta get your interpretation how how it all came together too. So I have like the three way trifecta here. Well, first of all, I grew up in Morristown, New Jersey, and Did I'm you? insulted by the pictures you have on your wall of the Rangers. What's up? You don't like the Devils? No, sorry, I am. Uh, wow. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, with, I'm, you. A, I'm with you. I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm with you. Uh, you know what's funny? I I work in Morristown. Uh, I lived in Rutherford, so I lived 
back in the day, and you remember as Brendan Byrne Arena. Yep. Um, yeah. my I'll, and I'll, I'll say my little short story. My dad took me to my first New York Ranger Devils game. Mm -hmm. And this is when the Devils had the Christmas jerseys, as right. I call them. And I said to my dad, I go, who's the ugly team? He goes, those are the Devils. I go, who's the cool team with the red, white, and blue because of the flag? Because those are the Rangers. I go, I like them. <laughs> so ever since then, uh, through thick and thin, even though I only won one Stanley Cup, and we lost in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm proud to be a diehard Ranger fan. Uh, well, I'm a diehard Knicks fan, so I never really liked the Nets. So I, I'll give you that too. <laughs> wow. I'm, upset, I'm upset with Ewing. I was at that game where he scored five points and we lost, didn't get to, the, to win the championship. Championship, I remember, uh, trust me. But I did not have the balls to tell him that when I met him. So uh, my, <laughs> I, neither have I because my dad met him and I actually met him and that guy was – Towering me by at least a few more feet than me. And I'm like, nice to meet you, Mr. Ewing. Have a great day. <laughs> my favorite part of meeting him was my father in law was there and uh, he's from Texas. And he said, I couldn't believe it. He ate the same food we ate. Because <laughs> he thought that Patrick Ewing being so big would have giant steaks and things <laughs> like that. <laughs> you would think. Um, I did get to meet John Starks. And I'll, I'm going to tell you, I was actually the same height as him at 6'2. Right. Um, so it was kind of, I'm like, wow, you are really, well, I didn't want to say to him that he was really short, but I'm like, how are you a point guard? <laughs> but then again, when I look at some of his help that he had, Oakley, Ewing, you know, all those guys, and I'm like, okay, never mind. I understand totally. So that's why he was probably one of the, one of my favorite point guards in, you know, in that era with Michael Jordan and Larry Bird too. I will mention that. Um, but uh, yeah. So growing up in New Jersey, I played in every shit band ever. Uh, with the drums <laughs> and so because of that I became a studio musician and studied under Bernard Purdy who played with uh, Aretha Franklin and Steely Dan oh, wow. and then from there I got to play with Tommy James and the Shondells um, I guess he's from Jersey because we were, we were in New Jersey I remember we do a lot we did a lot of recording in Lodi New Jersey oh my god yeah that was five minutes from where I used to live <laughs> Platinum Island was the name of the studio I don't think it's there anymore, but I do remember. No, no, I don't think that guy's alive anymore. I don't think he is alive um, anymore, but I remember hearing that growing that place growing up. But because of all of that, when Chris gave me his fifty demos, I had been playing out of the people's stuff anyway, so I was used to putting a lot of drums on a lot of stuff, and so I didn't think you know Chris' stuff was great, and mm -hmm. but you never know what stuff that it, what's going to come of it, and all of a sudden he started sending them back, and they were finished, and I was like, okay, we should make a band. This is pretty good stuff, right? And the initial stuff was kind of funny because I would throw some keyboard parts on it and it was starting to sound like the cars. And I was like, okay, I think we got something weird going on here. And, and that's a good thing. Morphed into what it is now, which which, which we call genre fluid. We still don't know what it is. <laughs> it, it, but it's really good though. That's the thing. Uh, you, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I, that's one thing I would say that. And um, and the, the, the band name, Hide and Shine, I, I got to ask, how did that form because it's an interesting name i've never you, you never would think of hide and shine to be a band name you know what i mean well it's funny actually just the other day i was uh going through some old writing i do a lot of writing just like mm -hmm. uh, poetry or just you know like mm -hmm. writing stuff and i actually found like the the, the poem or the writing right. where, I, where i think i first mentioned it wasn't hide and shine, but it was shine and hide or something like that. And mm -hmm. and then I, uh, at some point, I had built a website to store all this poetry, and I just used that. I just called it hide and shine dot com. Okay, because it was just like anonymous, you know. I didn't mm -hmm. want like, and I wanted to like just build, you know, write this stuff, put it out on the internet, and just not even put my name on it or anything like that. So it kind of had a good it resonated with me, like you know, like I'm being creative, but not ambitious or anything mm -hmm. and then uh i use that uh hide and shine .com as an email address and i think these guys saw like i sent emails with that <laughs> they saw that and uh i think we were the, you dumped the songs too yeah we, i was using that the hide and shine .com for to put like the demos up right. and one day i just said like all right guys you know we got a band i think we need a band name and they were like what are you talking about i thought it, it's hide and shine and i was like oh Oops. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> they just assumed that's what it was and they liked it. And I was like, all right, that's fine with me. It's like, oops, but I love the idea. It's yeah. 
I mean, that's that's so much of what, like, I just, the more and more we work together, I see like so much is intuitive. We just kind of like, every, like, oh, here's something. Let's go with that. You know, right. like, here's, here's this song. We don't know what it's going to be. And, you know, we, we play it for the first time and you're like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Wonder, wonder where that's going to go. So you know, a lot of the stuff is really intuitive like that. So I, I, I was not, I was just like, sure, that's going to be it then. <laughs> no thought put into it. Hey, you sometimes those are the better ones, you know what I mean? Like, right. you know, when I was trying to figure out my own, you know, my own podcast name and someone called me the sleeveless one because I would <laughs> wear no sleeves during my interviews. Like I was comfortable. I wanted to be comfortable. I wasn't trying to make it like, oh, let's make this a five page essay questionnaire and talk about every single thing. No, let's just. I'm more of improv. So that's why it works better for me. Like, you know, I'll shoot from the hip, um, you know, and I think that's what, you know, the sleevey G came out and someone goes, Oh G. And I'm like, Oh, sleevey G. And then boom, it just, it just worked out that way. You know what I mean? So for me, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm lucky. And like I said, uh, I'm thrilled, um, you know, where, where I'm at and talking to you guys tonight too, because it's always great to hear how the bands get formed. You know what I mean? Like, they don't realize how much work it takes. You know, yeah, it's, not, it's not like the old days where like Chris was saying, you, you know, you hang out in a bar and you meet all the musicians, mm -hmm. you know, like I think I know Michael and I were in New York city for many years. And, and so it was just like bands formed without even with no effort at all. It was just like, yeah. you, you find yourself playing with people. Um, so now it's, you know, like I said, the, the thought of it was like, Oh, really? That sounds crazy. <laughs> but the sound you guys have there is just, like I said, it's such a great sound and people, you know, I, when I hear a good album or when I hear a great album, I really do, I guess, put it to the way of, I appreciate the music as you, you know, I feel like as I talk to like a younger generation of bands and the, I wouldn't call older generation, but the, the generation that we're now, you know, it seems like when you're when you're writing songs and all that stuff, guys tell me how much now they appreciate the music more and appreciate the time that they put into it after they had families and stuff like that. I actually had a uh, a band that was just telling me how appreciative they said. He goes, the best part where he goes, I was a total prick. He goes, I'll go to the bars. I was that prick. I was that guy. I was the guy, give me the beers. Let's go and, you know, have fun. But then he said the band split up for a little bit and then long and behold, like they're together again stronger than ever but they appreciate it more is that can you say safely say for you guys is the same thing for you now from from the younger days it's a lot more relaxed um we get we get together at a set day at a set time and we record or we write um we play gigs mm -hmm. you know it's 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 a lot it's not as stressful I was in a couple of bands where everybody fist fought all the time. And at our age now, I would hate to see that happen. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, this is a very easy flowing situation we have. Plus we also, when we record things, we try to limit ourselves to one or two takes and that's it. Okay. And so we're in and out, we're done. And that's just, that's just it. And so you've got to come on your game and ready to go. Otherwise, it, it, get in a week later <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that you know it, like i said it takes time like um the album i know it's tough like what how long did you guys think that album took you guys to write down and do the tracks and everything just out of curiosity probably about a year i think a year yeah and i think the, the, working out the songs together probably takes the most time mm -hmm. recording the tracks the musical tracks takes the least amount of time writing the lyrics takes a fair amount of time so yeah it was probably about a year wow. it's an so, odd time too in the music business because everybody that wasn't available to us in the late 90s and at the turn of the century are now all available to us so we're able to record all our tracks and then send them off to a, a mixer who mm -hmm. mixes the entire record which is a lot different than the way it used to be which mm -hmm. is kind of nice I mean, now you could, you know, kind of relax. Say, hey, here you go, mix it out up for me, please. And, uh, and it's quite affordable too. It used to not be affordable at all. No, I remember back. You know, I always hear, uh, you know, stories not just from you guys, but also like if you hear like guys like Metallica or Dave Grohl mention it, you know how difficult it was to 
have people mix your, your music together in the ridiculous pricing back in the day in the you know even the 80s 90s and then early 2000s you know what i mean and when everything switched was definitely through covid i mean a lot of things had changed and i know a lot of bands were shipping you know were recording from home through the laptop or through you know a mixer i mean when you during covid times how did you guys were you able to, to work as well during covid or was it more well, we, did you find it more difficult we worked together um yeah we worked together a couple of years um I found as a drummer, people sent me a sent me a lot of tracks during COVID, mm -hmm. and I'd play on them, and they'd go back to whoever, and then they'd show up on TV or someplace because you don't get paid anymore. And right. so, I noticed there was a lot more co oping of my drum parts. I can't say the same for my bandmates, but I mean it was weird. I never had that happen before, but everybody was just sending stuff, and then they'd. I mean, I remember scoring an entire movie that way, and never being in the same room as the other composers wow yeah. yeah it was just bizarre and it was weird too because you tried to get your energy up but it was like i can't i can't imagine being like recording for a movie and you you, you know the, the orchestra's on one side and you're like in another room this was more rock and roll but this right. was literally an email would come in and say okay in this scene the person runs through the room and then they slam the door and at 30 seconds hit all the symbols and then i'd email it off to somebody else and then and then they fall, six and months later the whole thing was scored. Was oh my weird. god! <laughs> weird. Wow, that's weird. Um, so I, I, so I know Mike, you've been playing drums for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Chris, I'm going to go to you. How long have you been playing bass? You're muted, Chris. Hey, Chris, you're muted. I think. Bass bar trick didn't work that time. Sorry, man, we're getting hit by a storm here. Uh, so are we out here in New Jersey. Uh, uh, yeah. Lightning, thunder strikes. I think hail came down too. Yeah, Just... I'm like, oh shit. That's why I'm over here looking at my phone. I'm like, yeah, I know, Saber. That's why I've been. I'm looking at my phone too. I'm like, oh great. Hopefully the tree didn't fall in my car. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've been playing bass probably about 15 or so years, I guess. Um. Well, probably longer than that. Be closer to 20. Off and on. What was the so uh, the question is what was the reason for picking up the bass? Just something challenging, or was it like you wanted? A um, so yeah, that's a good question. Like I, I grew up kind of playing guitar. I never was like awesome at guitar, but I was just okay, just really guitar. Mm -hmm. I, and I played <laughs> trumpet too. Um, but a friend of mine, gosh, this goes way back, was just like, "Hey man, we're looking for a bass player," and I was like, well, "I don't really play bass. I, I mean, I've got a bass, but..." You know, I just tried mm -hmm. playing it and then I got into playing it and then I played it long enough to where I was like, there's a switch because you can always tell guys that play bass that come at it from guitar and they play it like a guitar. Mm -hmm. um, but then there was a switch for me. It's just like, no, I'm, I'm going to take a, a bass player's approach to this. And that's when the light went on. And it's like, I really enjoy playing bass because it's, it's all about the groove and just kind of just feeling it. Yeah, yeah. And Chris it, plays it like a percussion instrument, which is what it is. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a, a groove bridge between uh, Michael and Chris. You know? yeah. is, hopefully, there's a little cover of water too. Right. So <laughs> now, then I got to ask Chris, writing the lyrics down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it takes time, but do you get feedback from? Mike and Chris to help you out with the lyrics or do you just like, I know some people sometimes go in a room, lock themselves for like a month and write lyrics and then come out and say, this is it. Here it is. What do you guys think? Like, mm -hmm. I know. And some people accept feedbacks too. I'm not sure how your writing process goes. We haven't written anything together yet. Okay. Uh, so far it's been right from the beginning. Like, like the, the first thing that comes out of me, it's usually a guitar riff or sometimes a piano riff, but like a guitar riff and a vocal melody. Okay. And from that moment on, I'm singing like word, like fake words and sounds. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, like that amount of chess, bad, no, go on, bad, no, you know, like whatever, it's just like blah, blah. And then just keep doing that over and over again. And then little phrases pop up. Okay. Out of the ether. You're like, oh, that's interesting. And then that gets added in and then you keep going. So, and then at some point it's like, 
you know, there are enough words kind of come in and I, you know, I just sort of jot them down or record them. And at some point I'm like, oh, I think the song is about, or it, has, it makes like a picture of something. Right. And then at a certain point is like the finishing where it's like, all right. And that, that's when I sit down and just like, I'll just write free form, just like blah, blah, you know, and, and just kind of fill in the blanks mm -hmm. with that picture of what, what, I, you know, what kind of came with that. Um, that's been the process so far. Okay. Hey, you know, and that's, and it's working. I was always curious because again, everyone's different when they have their, their writing, you know what I mean? So that's yeah. like, and that, and that's something I have to give you a lot of kudos on because there's not a lot of people who could do that. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, like you, you play with, like with the piano or the guitar and then you, you keep going with the riff and, you know, after you're done that you probably send it to Mike and Chris and then to hear what they could do. Yeah. You know, I, and there are, there are some songs that come from experiences, you mm -hmm. know, like when, when I was younger, I think this is for most people, it's like, life experience is so striking and has so much to it and it's new and and like stuff comes pouring out and mm -hmm. you know you can write a, like things that happen during the day kind of can start to come out um you know we have a couple of those tunes that were lingering from the past like they were mm -hmm. little, little things like that but for the most part i never I don't sit down and say i'm gonna write a song about blah blah today you know right. <laughs> that never happens it just kind of comes out intuitively. No, and that's one thing. Again, like you know, <clears throat> things from the past comes in and makes it, and it makes it for a good song. And that's something you know. What I one thing I do miss listening to music when you listen to rock, hard rock, or even hip hop. You know, these days the music I feel like it doesn't have that stories anymore. It's just about the riffs, the drums, the bass, the the guitar line, or but. I, I feel more like missing the the storyline to the music to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. For me, listening to the lyrics are sometimes are more important than listening to, you know, the band itself because the lyrics are the most powerful thing sometimes. Um, and I could take that with like Lincoln Park being one of my favorite all time favorite bands. Growing, you know, listening to them since day one. Um, you know, I got to see them before they were Lincoln Park. They were called Hybrid Theory, which was their main album name. In uh and Mike, you might remember this place, the Birchill in back in the day. That's where they played before the, the bar burnt down to the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got What's that place in Randolph, New Jersey. That's still there, isn't it? Uh, it's a horrible place. Not talking about the red barn, are you? No. Was it no, it was I can't remember. I can't remember. There, there's a couple of bad places in Jersey. Just yeah, we'll leave. I used, it. To, I used to go to City Gardens all the time. City Gardens, where was that? That, a? that was a horrible place in Trenton, but they Trenton. Had every, every band ever played there. Oh wow! See and me. John, and John Stewart was the bartender. Oh my god, John, John Stewart was the bartender. Yes, he was. Oh my god, that's so funny. At least now you know where he came from. Right. <laughs> um, the lyrics are for me. The lyrics are always the important things. You know, I hey, listen. I love a a, a huge drum set. I love guitar solos and bass solos too but the lyrics is where it comes from you know and i saw you guys made a couple of awesome youtube videos which i, I gotta give you guys a credit on too you know what i mean like not well i, mean, I can say music videos i hate saying youtube videos but music videos that you know i miss the old days again vh1 mtv public access tv where, where you could actually watch music videos from back in the day and that's something i miss like you guys have hit it pretty good too with that and, you know, I, again, I commend you guys on that because a lot of people are not doing it anymore. And if they're doing it, they're doing it for all the wrong reasons and not the right reasons. Like, I think it's more of the power of the music that you guys have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, we did. Yeah, we had one professional music video that was all Michael's doing. I had nothing to do with that. And then I saw it for the first time. I was like, what the f are you kidding me? <laughs> But and, still. and apparently that's you know it's getting a react it's getting a great reaction i saw i showed it to my wife and i and i watched her face and she was like she she couldn't tell whether to laugh her ass off or to like like she was shocked she was scared mortified like what the hell is this right but again but talk about you know having a music video for you guys is still it's still one of those important things you know what i mean 
yeah um, it's, really, it's fun it's great to put you know to put a little like visual creative with the music it's such a such a powerful thing we it all is. showed up for rehearsal and i said you stand here chris you stand here i'm gonna put strobe lights in front of you and here's a gopro and that was it and so then i sent it to my friend who is a pretty big time commercial director and i said here's a whole bunch of footage of cats and aliens and dumpster fires now make a video and that's what came <laughs> yeah. and there you go and you've come out with a very interesting music video too we've got but, other ideas too that'll shock and dismay you yeah if i had directed it it probably would have been boring it would have been all literary and conceptual and <laughs> i found when i told the two chrises they had no choice they just did it <laughs> and and lo and behold you guys have a great video thank you it's so great. now that I know. Granted, we're in the summertime. Is there anything going on for the for like touring or see? You know, any guys think of doing something this for the summer or the fall? Well, our re record just came out two weeks ago, so we're starting to kind of gain momentum at radio. Mm -hmm. We have a, a lot of good local gigs coming up. We're opening up for the band The Folk Implosion in Kingston, New York, at, for their reunion, and then we're going to play this festival in Western New York, where everybody dresses in a chicken suit. Huh? It's called the Boacock Festival. <laughs> and so we're playing the after party. And then we've got uh, some shows in Woodstock and some street festivals. And yeah, we're just slowly building up a, a fire. The momentum. And yes, congratulations on your CD release too, gentlemen. You know, that's still a huge honor. And, you know, to uh, to get that, that's always the best thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we're, back, we're back to calling it a record release because we didn't make CDs. We made vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with vinyl. I should, yeah. I, I really should buy a vinyl machine, a record machine here. But my wife goes, "Where are you going to put it?" And the kids don't break it. I go, "Good well, point." Um, there's a double record coming your way this week, so that'll oh. hopefully be a little inspiration for you to go out and get a turntable. Oh no, and I appreciate that, guys, so much. I'm looking forward to it because, yeah, um, in my old podcast where we did like straight up all music and everything, um, I have a couple of records that guys have sent to me and my partner at that time um but i am looking forward to it i actually the neighbor has one i borrow and i go to his house when he's away so yeah. he's he's away saturday so if it comes this week i'll be over his house listening there's but, nothing like it man there's it's just there's something different between a vinyl record and a cd i will say that mm -hmm. i feel like you get more out of the vinyl than you do from a cd um granted i get it the cd you know the the only cool thing about having a CD player back in the day in the car, you couldn't bring a vinyl with you, so that was that was difficult. So having a CD in the car was kind of, you know, the futuristic. Now it's iPods and iPhones and Streamline, but I, I miss the I, I do miss that art of listening through an LP, listening through vinyl. Even a tape deck would have been great. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think cassettes are coming back. Hey, if they are, I, I would love to get my Sony yellow Walkman again. I'll be honest with you. That's, that's the one thing I miss is my Sony yellow Walkman. I had two of them. <laughs> so one stayed home. The other one went on the road a lot. So when I went away on family vacations. Right. So. Right. They were waterproof. Yes, they were waterproof because I've dropped them in the pool a few they times. They snap clothes on, but yeah. Those yep, cool. they had the, uh, the black clothes right on top. And then mm -hmm. sometimes there's a pain in the ass to open up. So. Yep. Uh Guys, I, you know, this was really awesome to have you guys on here tonight. I really, really appreciate you guys coming on. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, but I got to say, is it's an honor having you guys. I really appreciate it. Before we uh, sign off, can, everyone, can you let everybody know where they can find you guys and everything? Oh, yeah. Um, you can start hideandshine.com. It's a good place to start. Uh, Instagram, Hide and Shine Band. Mm -hmm. Bunch of stuff on YouTube, Hide and Shine Band uh where else band camp band camp you can buy vinyl there we're on uh we did a, a segment on talk shop live okay which is uh you know so you know what that is um spotify apple music yeah all the all the streaming services yeah Hide well, and definitely i'm gonna have everything tagged for you guys too so no, no worries when i air the episode thank you. um so guys i i can't thank you guys enough for coming on tonight Really appreciate it. Let's hope no one gets hit by the storm as hard as I just did. <laughs> um, uh, guys, thank you so much. And like I always say, guys, you can see dreams do come true. Keep working hard. Keep working at it. 
and you can go anywhere you want. And how I always end my show is nothing but love, peace, and happiness. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Thanks so much.